In my final UK vlog, I'm going to be touring the underrated city of Glasgow, visiting the must-see attractions and absorbing the culture and banter of Scotland's biggest city. There's so much to see and there's so much to do, and it's all free. This is the final episode of my UK series, hope you enjoy. So before I could reach Glasgow, I had to say bye to my Aunt Linda, and then after giving me a lift to the train station, I had to say bye to my Uncle Doki as well. Not to fear though, after a short train ride to Gaelic Head, my cousin Callum picked me up. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my Aunt Linda and Uncle Doki for letting me stay with them for my duration of my time in Scotland. This is my cousin Callum by the way, he's going to be my um, designated driver. Travel buddy for the Glasgow segment. <laughs> he's a local, he'll set me right. Um. <laughs> Another thing I should warn you about Callum is he's probably going to steal the show for this entire thing. I'm going to have to edit most of him out. I'm starting off our destination number one and the Glasgow tour at the People's Palace. The People's Palace of Glasgow is a palace made by the city for the people. Back during its creation, it was built for the poor and overcrowded east end of Glasgow so that the people would have a place that showcases the culture and history and be free entry and open for the people forever. It even has the outfits worn by the caster Rabsi Nesbitt and the famous banana boots worn by my hero and idol, Billy the Big Ian Connolly. The People's Palace is situated in the centre of the Glasgow Green, which is the local park. Middle of Glasgow Green, good place to walk your pop. So Glasgow Green, good spot, come out and have your, your pieces and stuff like that on a weekend. And that's what they call it, pieces. When you're out enjoying yourself in the beautiful sunlight. Obviously we're here in autumn, so it's not going to be beautiful sunlight. Just picture it now with a clear sky and um, and warmer climate. Right, now you're pushing. So these posts here that are stationed all over this sort of area, the Glasgow Green, were actually the washing lines for the tenement buildings for the people that used to live in the area. They come down here to dry their clothes on. It's just another wonderful thing about the Glasgow people, sense of community that they have. We then walked a short distance from the People's Palace and Glasgow Green to the Barra's Market. So this is the Barra's, obviously, Barra's Market. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting it was, actually. Now I'm I'm walking around the perimeter fence of it. If you're ever out though, it's definitely worth a look if you're here on a weekend. Just come and see all the stuff that they have for sale. Had it been open, you could expect to see busy and bustling markets with various characters selling their wares. Something like this. Sports socks! Yeah, they are sports socks! Two for a pound! Two for a pound! We then head north to the Tenants Brewery. Tenants Lager has been brewed here in Scotland since 1885, and in my opinion is Scotland's second most famous alcoholic beverage, right behind whiskies. And you wanted to put to that? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the pubs you walk past as well, if you see the giant tea out the front of them, that means that they serve tenants. We then travelled to the Glasgow Necropolis. Bit of a, a morbid, I'd, I'd say, um, tourist attraction, which is the Glasgow Necropolis. The Necropolis is where the sensationally rich members of Glasgow society find their final resting place. Some of the mausoleums and crypts are bigger than many of the living spaces for the poor. There are many historical figures that ended up here, but among them is William Miller, a Scottish poet who's famed for writing children's poems, and the most famous of his poems is Wee Willie Winkie. And that across the road, obviously. Glasgow Cathedral, also known as St Mungo's Cathedral, and not to be mistaken with St Mungo's Hospital from the Harry Potter series, is the oldest building in Glasgow, and the oldest cathedral in Scotland. It was dedicated to St Mungo, the patron saint of Glasgow, whose tomb lies within the cathedral, and it was even once visited by King Edward I, or Edward Longshanks as he's also known, during the first war of Scottish independence, and many Scots are still warring for independence to this very day. We then walked through town to George Square. Okay, so we've just walked down from the necropolis and the cathedral here to George Square, central square for Glasgow. They're just getting all the Christmas decorations and stuff up and all the light. It's quite a nice spot to come out and just sit and people watch. Sort of a similar idea to like Piccadilly Circus or Times Square. It's a nice spot to just sit and watch the city go by. And you want to add? Plenty of places around the corners and stuff like that. We're getting coffees and sandwiches and a couple of bars there. The Costa originated here in about the 18th century. The light up signs and stuff like that came in about actually way before that, so I think it was early 16th when they managed to get the light bulbs working in there, so more you know. Impressive historical facts there. The place I suppose, once they get the Christmas decorations and stuff up, Callum was saying that um, they've got a Ferris wheel and stuff too, don't they? Yeah, it's a lovely big Christmas market here. Glasgow, of course, once being the European city of culture, has plenty of cuisines from around the world. We've got Greg's, pret a which is French, and a Mexican eatery called Barbarito. And a fish and chip shop. And a Starbucks. 
All the different nations are represented in Glasgow, all the various cuisines and cultures. From George Square, a short walk down Queen Street brings us to the Duke statue, in front of the Gallery of Modern Art. Got a cowboy hat on his foot as well now. Here's a statue of the Duke of Wellington. Famously characterized, the statue here always has a traffic cone in his head. Someone put one up there a long time ago just as a prank, but they keep taking it down, people keep putting it back up, and now it's just a fixture, I suppose. Classic, iconic, and, you know, gives a good sign of the Glaswegian sense of humor, too. Continuing our journey, we then walk down Buchanan Street, which is one of the main shopping centers of all of Glasgow. There's Santa Claus in the toilet there. Big peacock made out of metal. This is where you like to find all your fancy shops and stuff like that. As well as, there's a Nike store, Zara, Levi's, Chocolatier, or near. looking at the shinies. Or looking at the shinies. All the Christmas decorations and things up. Adding to the international cuisine is a Polish sausage stand at the bottom of Buchanan Street. Coming at the end of Buchanan Street, we then walk down Argyle Street until we reach Glasgow Central. Doesn't seem to matter where I go in the world now, I seem to be able to take a bit of Canada with me. Middle of Glasgow, right under Glasgow Central Station, is a Tim Hortons. The UK is openly mocked for how bad its railways are. However, here in Glasgow, Central Station has been awarded the 95% score on customer satisfaction back in 2017. Just come around the corner now to Glasgow Central Station, which is incidentally where I took the train into when I came in the other day. Throughout several of my posts about my journey to Central Station, I've been using the Billy Connolly song, Last Train to Central Station. So if the Big Ian likes the place enough to write a song about it, that's good enough for me. From Central Station, we made our way to the Riverside Transport Museum. Just down here off the banks of the Clyde is the Glen Lee sailing ship and the Transport Museum, which, incidentally, if you're traveling on a budget, is free entry. Another thing about Scottish culture is we love a freebie. Exhibit number one in the Transport Museum is a Tesla. You know you're getting old when they start putting Teslas in a museum. It's not a good sign, is it? Two bikes at the top there from Ewan McGregor's tour. After satisfying our thirst for a museum about cars, trains, bikes, and other modes of transport, we then walked through the tune to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. The Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum does exactly what it says in the tin it's an art gallery and a museum. We're now in the Kelvin Grove Gallery and Art Museum. Once again, another one of the must-see attractions for Glasgow and, again, free entry. From there, we made our way to the Botanical Gardens, also considered a must-see of Glasgow. I mean, it is quite a nice little garden to walk around so far, but it's a bit labyrinthine at the same time. <laughs> Going to a bunch of dead end. People make Glasgow, I like that. It's a good slogan, the people make Glasgow. It's like at the end of um, the movie Troy, or the end of Thor Ragnarok. It's not a place, it's a people. Kelvin, that's the, that's the Kelvin. <laughs> okay, so originally this was supposed to be a walk-in tour, but it looks like we managed to fit almost everything in. And it's only one o'clock, and that's all thanks to my good buddy cousin here. Nailed that. Thank you for the tour, I've enjoyed it, and I've definitely enjoyed very informative description of what all of the thingamabobs and what's majigs and stuff are. I'm really good at those bits. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Especially the bit when I make up stuff. When my official list of tourist attractions exhausted, Callum then took me for a wildcard entry, Ashton Lane, which is a restaurant and theatre lane hidden essentially down one of the back streets. All these little, like, really kind of quirky little pubs and stuff. Once again, all the lights up. If it was nighttime, that thing would look amazing. See that? Handy having a local with you. Another one of those little local things. It didn't come up on any sort of, like, Google searches, but it's one of those things as well. If you didn't know that it was here, you wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to see it, and it's, it's definitely worth a look, if nothing else. Something I absolutely love about Glasgow. So, so far, is every single little side alley, every single little corner I've turned, there's something different to see. Every single spot that I have a look at, there's something else to see, and it's gorgeous. With the day's plan almost at an end, we then ventured outside of Glasgow to Falkirk to see the gargantuan attraction called the Kelpies. Now Kelpies are a mythical creature. Each source I read tells the legend differently. Basically they're a mythical, shape-shifting sea creature, but on land they look like horses. 
That was the inspiration for these sculptures anyway. And it's free! And it's free! <laughs> Love a <our> freebie! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Pleasure. I'd like to get the bill of it the fuel. Hmm? After saying bye to my cousin Callum, I checked into my hotel and had to face the harsh reality that my UK journey had come to its terminus. My last night in the UK. I kind of don't want to leave yet. There's so many things that I want to do, so many places that I want to go to, so many things that I want to see. I spend more time with my family. I had to wearily make my way back to Toronto. As a wave passing by, leave a mark in our marks to turn the memories. The river's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. The river's gonna cry when you're gone. Remember and like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on social media at Somewhere Anywhere. <laughs> You're definitely going to want to stick around and keep watching because you're not going to believe what's going to happen next. <laughs>